beleaguered by storms and hurricanes and by the constant uncertainty of being hopelessly lost in a vast ocean, 17 caravels and an army of men, thirsty for gold and glory, opened the doors of a new and fascinating adventure. A visionary man before an unknown path is able to find a new route that others will soon follow. Christopher Columbus, the pioneer who will uncover the American continent to Europe. Following a more northerly route than the one of the first voyage, Columbus discovers a great number of small islands that today are known as the Lesser Antilles. These islands, inhabited by the fierce Carib Indians, lacked abundant water. Columbus sails from island to island in search of this precious liquid, and soon he will discover Boriken. Spain, as a Catholic nation, assumes the responsibility of converting the native Indians. Already in his second voyage, the priests are there to assure the presence of God in the new world. In one of the Lesser Antilles, Columbus rescues an Indian woman who is said to come from another island and who is protected by the priests. This protection reaffirms the Christian mission of the discovery the claiming of this new land for Catholicism and the Christianization of its inhabitants. The Indian girl escapes when she sees her island, but her escape marks the way for the Spaniards, a route that takes them to a new land. Again. Now for Spain and for Christ is St. John the Baptist. The discovery is a promise of glory, riches, and power. Oriken is impressive and intriguing. A new episode of adventure and hope. The exploration begins and the search intensifies.
Having faced the savagery of the Carib Indians, the Spaniards are cautious in their search for civilization. Soon the explorers discover that they are not alone. A copper-colored race called Tainos preceded them. Fascinated by its beauty, Anxious to discover and explore its mysteries and treasures, the Spaniards journey into the insides of this new land. But their arrival does not go unnoticed. Columbus needs water in order to continue his voyage. He knows that if he finds civilization, he will also find water. Everlasting spring that so many times quenched the thirst of the Indians now satisfies the needs of the Spaniards and of the expedition. Ancient cultural roots discover one another. It is up to them to live in peace or perish. More than a decade goes by between the discovery of the island of St. John the Baptist and the onset of the ambitious exploration and colonization. With religious piety and good faith, some of the settlers try to avoid an imminent conflict between the two races. Juan Ponce de Leon, a Spanish soldier, is authorized to explore, settle, and colonize St. John the Baptist. But colonization means the forced labor of the Indians. 
Soon, the strong character of the Spaniards worsens the conflict with the Tainos. The anguish of the Indians soon goes beyond the material loss. Ha. The Indians lose their women. The colonization strategy of Ponce de Leon encourages the union of the races, Spaniards and Indians, thus creating a new social structure and a new culture. Facing this loss, the Indians rebel against the Spaniards. They had two choices, to hide in the mountains or to face the enemy. The war cry is heard. The battle drums soon alert the Spaniards. The Indians follow their beliefs and rituals to strengthen their power in war. The conflict is inevitable. Even with the advantage of their weapons, strategies and horses, for the Spaniards the outcome is still uncertain. For the Indians, the purification of their bodies through vomiting and vertigo was necessary in order to receive the divine graces of their gods. The Indians strengthened their courage with Cohoba. Under its effects, they believe they will receive the godly powers needed to defeat the Spaniards. With Cohoba and Myth, the Indians start their desperate and suicidal attack. The battle will determine who will rule over these beautiful lands. The Indians were not intimidated by the Spanish arms superiority and courageously fought a losing battle. The Spaniards subjugate the Indians. Death covers the helpless land.
the Indians cry their dead, especially their leaders. The same rivers that once quenched the thirst of the Spaniards are now red with blood. The defeat totally disheartens the Indians, shows them the futility of their beliefs, and brings forth the end of an era. The Indian will leave behind an ethnic legacy that will merge and will become less and less perceptible among the future inhabitants of the land, the land that once was their god. Yet their legacy will never vanish. In need of laborers, the Spaniards seek the African slave. Hunted like animals, shipped in overcrowded and inhumane conditions, the black slaves reach the New World only to perform menial jobs and to be sold like beasts by the Europeans. The emerging economic structure of the Spanish colony depends on mining and agriculture, which in turn stimulates the development of commerce. Agricultural products bring forth all types of imports, basic items and luxuries. Mining and agriculture need a strong back that can withstand the rigorous work and the hot tropical climate of the Antilles. The sweat and toil of the African slave brings wealth to the colony. The black race will be vital in the formation of a future Puerto Rican society, a society created by the constant fusion of races and cultures. The black race will be an important element in the ethnic composition of Puerto Rico. Its social function will slowly evolve until its legacy is firmly established. Pain and injustice are the basic elements in the historic evolution of the African in the Puerto Rican culture. The most denigrating servile conditions and constant racial prejudice will be suffered in flesh and blood. inhumane carimbo, ah! symbol of the integration process of the black into our culture. The coast was very important in the cultural and population growth of Puerto Rico. The coastal villages saw the development of this distinctive new race, born from the mixture of Indians, blacks, whites and mestizos. The ancient colonial boundaries evolve into villages, towns and settlements. Here, a strong social fiber based on the family as the main trunk of our society is developed.
Strong communal roots mature through the joint efforts of the Puerto Rican inhabitants, through their collaboration and hospitality. of this society are found in these first communities. They are the strength, the power, that move the economic expansion of the island. The need to provide basic goods creates new occupations, the spine of the island's growth. The fishermen's villages create a new source of commercial wealth and an alternative to agriculture. Also, the coastal towns are the center of a new class of craftsmen who create the goods needed by the growing society. The combination of races find in work their absolute common denominator. In work, our races interact, interchange opinions, and in times of crisis, develop solidarity. Work is the origin of the national conscience. Women, as the solid foundation of the family and the races, teach us to work and grow together, to create a family and a nation, to live in unity of purpose. The Christian mission does not end with colonization. Religion solidly unites the island's inhabitants, a union even stronger than ethnic, political, and geographic differences. emerges in Puerto Rico. Established in the communities and forged by the toil of its members, it is strengthened through the family and the strong Christian beliefs. In Puerto Rico, the military forces are kept in constant alert. The strategic position makes the island vulnerable to invasions from the enemies of Spain. Its coasts are never safe. Puerto Rico is the target of the ambitions of the British and pirates. The church bells warned the coastal town of Aguadilla. 
call it to organize its defenses. The church becomes the fort and refuge for the wounded. War does not discriminate between Spanish soldiers and Creole civilians. Nor between blacks, whites, and mulattoes, who are united in the difficult and bloody defense of their land. Calamity unites all Puerto Ricans. Once more, the colony resists the attack. Puerto Rico is the target of the ambitions of the British, Dutch, French, Carib Indians, and pirates. These attacks confirm the loyalty of its inhabitants. The defense against the invading forces links all ethnic, political, and social groups, and this oneness affirms the presence of a new race, which has shown loyalty and unity of mind. All roots are fused into one. Puerto Rico continues its path to the future. The 19th century sees the culmination of the Puerto Rican identity, of the new race. New generations face the same challenges as their ancestors in a society that becomes stronger day by day. It is the time for population growth, and immigrants foster the development of industries, mills, and commerce. Migrants from Corsica, Venezuela, and the Spanish provinces of Mallorca, Catalonia, and the Basque region are crucial in the development of the coffee plantations, the most important crop of the time. The family and religion are still the unifying elements of the Puerto Rican society. The 19th century sets the pace for the freedom of the black race. Cries for political reform and independence of criteria are heard among Puerto Ricans. A distinctive identity can be seen in the cultural, political, and economic life. All of this under a leadership which includes all ethnic groups. This century ends with political autonomy, a new horizon for racial solidarity. The end of the 19th century is also the end of the Spanish supremacy over Puerto Rico and the other colonies in America. The autonomy coincides with war rumors. The Spaniards get ready to fight with the United States. It is a war which Spain knows it cannot win because of the military superiority of the enemy. The long and bloody war for Cuban independence is the origin of the conflict between Spain and the United States, which puts Puerto Rico in the midst of the conflict. Puerto Rico gets ready for the inevitable participation in a conflict that will be crucial to its future. But the military efforts will be in vain. On July 25, 1898, the Americans occupy the town of Guanica. 
For Spain, this is a short and difficult war. In a few weeks, town by town, the American troops seize the southern part of the island. The Spanish and American authorities agree on an armistice which ends the war. As a result of its defeat, Spain cedes the territory of Puerto Rico to the United States. After winning absolute authority and jurisdiction over the island and its inhabitants, the Americans established their military, political, and legal institutions in Puerto Rico. New culture is felt in the island, a culture that will be an important influence in its destiny. The Americans. Puerto Rico will continue its development under a new ruler, one that is totally alien to its cultural roots. The 20th century is one of advancement and material progress in Puerto Rico, but it is also one of frustrations and disenchantments. In 1918, our progress suffers another setback. Once more, Puerto Rico faces adversities. In only minutes, the earthquake has destroyed the work of centuries, mainly in the northwest of the island. Earthquakes, hurricanes, and other calamities will befall. Yet, Puerto Rico will emerge from its ruins. Time, history, and three races created a culture that is distinctively Puerto Rican. Spring, the crystalline waters symbolize the first and definite encounter of two cultures. In the beginning, it was a process of mutual discovery. of two races which united into one. The church has been the cornerstone of the spiritual and moral character of the Puerto Rican, an intangible presence which has given strength in times of calamity and defeat. Only one history, in which all are present and none missing. Races like the Taina, which transcend and survive in the Puerto Rican legacy. Puerto Rico opens and absorbs, amends past injustices, and receives those who were injured because of the color of their skin and who through their strength and sweat forged a country. The black is no longer African, but Puerto Rican.
New cultures continue enriching and developing the Puerto Rican people. The American influence mixes and intermingles with a culture that does not give up its heritage. And today, the result is more than the sum of all its parts. A nationality marked by diaspora, spread into every corner of the world, with a heritage and a home to which all Puerto Ricans eventually return. An island where we live and grow. The same paradise discovered by Columbus 500 years ago.